and their lots. Lies, liars, and their lots. Uh, this was called from the teaching that preceded the series, which was titled The Things That Keep Us Apart from God. The Things That Keep Us Apart from God. Uh, some few things were mentioned. We're going to read from the book of Proverbs. Chapter 6, from verse 16 to verse 19. Proverbs chapter 6, 16 to 19. These six things the Lord hates. Indeed, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that manufactures wicked thoughts and plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies and he who sows discord among his brethren. So we took the second one which is a lying tongue and we titled it Lies, Liars and there are lots. I remember we introduced the topic before the short break. And by way of introduction, we said that these days everyone complains about moral decadence in our society that we see everywhere. In the business world, there is a high level of dishonesty, broken promises here and there, thefts of various magnitude and dimensions. Even as Christians, you do not know who to do business with in the house of God. Trust has been eroded even in some homes, deceptions here and there, infidelity here and there. The root of all these is a lying tongue. And the unfortunate thing is that even believers are not exempted. Believers are not immune. Uh, we can see in the story in Acts of Apostles, chapter 5, as young as the early church was, a couple sold their belongings on their own volition without anybody putting them under question. And the man came back to say that this is much that we generated from the sale. And the man of God asked him, are you sure? And he said, yes. You know the rest of the story. The wife also came in to corroborate what the husband said. As young as the church was. Praise God. Somebody said, lies circle the earth. While the fruit is still trying to put on his shoes. Praise God. Yes, lies circle the entire earth everywhere. While the fruit is still trying to lace off his shoes. What are lies? The Oxford Dictionary has this to say. 
when you say something that one knows is not true. So I underline one. Saying something that one knows is not true. Who is this person? Who is this one? Who is the person? The person saying it. The person saying it. There is an adage in my place that two people cannot be ignorance of lies. I, I, I don't know if the ignorance is the right word there. But in other words, when somebody is telling a lie, at least one person is aware. Whether the man saying it or the fellow that is listening or the two of them. Praise God. One lay your con, and your medium padanuro. Praise God. <laughs> so, whether the man saying it or the man listening, we know that, oh, this one is not true. Praise God. The another definition says to intentionally make a false statement so as to deceive. To intentionally make a false statement so as to deceive. So when you want to extray a lie, find out what the intentions are. Then the purpose. Why is this fellow saying this? If it's to deceive, then it's a lie. Then who then is a liar? Or who then is a liar? A liar is someone who misinterprets, or sorry, who misrepresents who he is. I'm quoting a note now. Emmanuel Adekusime says that a liar is someone who misrepresents who he is by what he does or what he says or by the fact or truth he purports to be true. So from this we can deduce that lie is not only in the words of mouth by the way you carry yourself and by what you do. Praise God. A liar is someone who makes an untrue statement and gives false impression with the intention to mislead or deceive. Praise the Lord. Now, in his teaching, he mentions some types of lies. He said, lies made by mystic, by error. He also said, lie by omission. He also mentioned restructuring and fabrication. What the Yorubas we call fabu, fabrication, praise God, when you intentionally fabricate. But tonight, we'll be looking at a few other ones. The first one here is what I call pure lies. Pure lies. Pure lies are lies rehearsed. You have rehearsed it before you say it. Praise God. Now let's look at an example. In Genesis chapter 26, verses 7 and 8. Genesis 26, 7 and 8, and also Genesis 27, 1 to 6. Genesis 26, 7 and 8 says, And the men of the place, okay, let's go back to verse 6. Now God told Isaac not to go down to Egypt, but to sojourn in Gerah. Right? Verse 6, let's start from verse 6. So, according to God's instruction, Isaac stayed where? In Gerah. Who asked him to go to Gerah? God. Verse 7. And the men of the place, the men of Gerah, asked him about his wife. Who is this young lady that, is, that you came to our land with? What did he say? Talk now. He said, she's my sister. For he was afraid to say, she is my wife. Thinking, what was his thought? 
lest the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because it's attractive and it's beautiful to look upon. Verse 8. When he had been there a long time, they asked the question and they paused. So they were watching them. So he's been there for a long time. Even the king himself was eyeing Isaac's wife. And he said, he looked out of a window. I don't know where the palace was. But he was looking inside somebody's house. Praise God. So he looked out of a window. And what did he see? Or who did he see? He saw Isaac doing what? Caressing Rebecca, his wife. Ah, ah. But you told me that this lady is your sister. So let's hear the response of the king. And Abimelech called, Abimelech called Isaac and said, See here, she's certainly your wife. The way you were touching her, she's not your sister, it's your wife. How did you dare say to me, why did you lie to me that she's your sister? And Isaac said to him, because I thought less I die on account of her. And so on and so forth. And the people of Gera said, it's okay, this is your last day. You need to move out of our land. Praise the Lord. Now what we are bringing out here is that Isaac told a pure lie. He has rehearsed it. Praise God. He rehearsed it before saying it. A similar one is also in Genesis 27, 1 to 6. But we won't look at that because it's also a familiar story of Esau and Jacob. When the mother heard that Isaac had said he was going to bless Esau. She quickly called Jacob. Said this is the plan of your father. Now present yourself as Esau. That was, was also well rehearsed. Praise God. So it was a pure lie. The second one I would like to talk about is half fruit. Half fruit. It has some iota of fruit in it. But it's not a pure fruit. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis 12, verse 10 to 20, a similar story to that of Isaac. It's the story of Father Abraham. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to where? Egypt, to live temporarily, for the famine in the land was oppressive, intense and grievous. Go on. And when he was about to enter into Egypt, what did he say? He said to Sarai, his wife, I know that you are beautiful to behold. No man will see you and take his eyes away from you. So when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife, and they will kill me. Why is it that Abraham and Isaac had the same line of thinking? Praise God. Eh? Like father, like son. Praise God. So they said, this is his wife. And they will kill me. But they will let you live. Alright, verse 13. Say, I beg you. He was even begging her. That you are my sister. So that it may go well with me. For your sake. And my life will be spared because of you. Now, what is the difference between the light that Father Abraham told and that of Isaac. Because we said Isaac own was a pure lie. Then the one of, of Father Abraham is half fruit. What is the difference? Where are these other school teachers? What is the difference? Yes, sir. There's what? In okay. reality, Sarah was both sister and wife to Abraham. In reality... Was what? Both sister and wife. Both sister and wife. Sarah was Abraham's half sister. Praise God. So if he said Abraham was, I mean, uh, Sarah was his wife, he was actually saying the truth. But in this context, it was meant to deceive. So Father Abraham told half truth. Praise God. That the Jew told us a story, and he must, he must have repeated this severally. That there was a time he traveled out of Lagos, I think, to Washington State, 
Elisha to be precise. So he came back to Lagos and got to Suleri. He said, okay, let me go and greet the founder. And suddenly he remembered that, oh, I shouldn't appear before this man empty-handed. So he bought some oranges and took to him. So there and then, Papa collected the orange and cut it into two. So he took one of them and said, wow, this is very sweet. You must have bought it on your way from where you travel to. And he just said, yes, daddy. Did he buy it from where he was coming from? He actually bought it on his way. But that was, the, the, the question was, did you buy it, maybe in Oshun State, where you went to? Praise God. So after saying no, the Holy Spirit told him, you have told a lie. And he went back to tell Baba that, sorry, sir, I actually bought it here in Moshin or thereabout. And the man nodded, he said, Holy Spirit, praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, the third one is exaggeration. Let's say it together. Say it as if you mean it. Say it as if you have exaggerated before. <laughs> exaggeration, okay? Numbers 13, 32 to 33. God instructed Moses to choose two, 12 representatives from each of the 12 tribes to go and spy up the land that he has given unto them. So let's hear the report of 10 of them. 32 and 33. So they brought the Israelites an evil report of the land which they had scouted, saying, the land through which we went to spy it out is a land that divorce its inhabitants. Is that correct? <clears throat> Is that correct? Aside from mean and evil report, it was exaggerated. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Can we have the message version? The message version. Okay. They spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scattered out the land from one end to the other. It's a land that swallows people whole. Praise God. Now, if it were a land that swallowed people whole, we didn't meet anybody there. They wouldn't have met anyone. And they said, everybody we saw was huge. Praise God. I think the King James Version refer to them as Anakims. It's not possible that everybody in a place, if we all stand up now, we see heights and various statues. So they, it was true that the people were stout. They were, they were giants. But it's not true that everybody. And they even went ahead to say that if we compare ourselves with them, we were like grasshoppers. Praise God. It was exaggeration. I remember one, uh, I think one afternoon or so, or one evening, somebody just called my wife. I said, mommy, 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 ah, accident, accident. I said, you know. There was an accident, broken legs, broken hands. And she mentioned somebody's name. And I said to my wife, that thing she says is not true. <laughs> and the following day as I was driving out, the brother said I had a broken leg, broken head. I saw him on the, on the, wearing a tie on a bike. I said, what did I tell you yesterday? <laughs> she said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's true that the fellow must have had an accident, but it wasn't as bad as that. Praise the Lord. And we are all children of God. The fourth one. Is that the fourth or fifth? Fourth. The fourth is flattery. Shall we say together? Flattery. So what is flattery? Excessive or, or insincere praise. When you praise someone excessively, or you are insincere, the way you praise someone is called 
flattery. Job said in Job 32, verse 22. Job 32, verse 22. For I do not know how to give flattering titles to any man. <clears throat> As my maker will soon take me away. For I do not know how to give flattering titles to any man. I do not flatter any man. It's not in my habit to flatter people. Because I know a day of accountability is coming. Praise God. Then the wise Solomon said in Proverbs 29 verse 5. Proverbs 29 verse 5. He says, He who rebukes a man shall afterwards find more favor than he who flatters with the tongue. A man who flatters his neighbor, the Bible says, spreads a net for his feet. When you flatter your neighbor, you are only plotting his or her downfall. Often I say, wow, awesome. You're looking good. And when you move away from that place, you say, oh, Lord, eh? <laughs> Kilo, what would that be? You say, look at your friend. What did she put on that she looks like a masquerade? Meanwhile, you have said to her, awesome. Praise God. There was a day I came out of my, my house. Somebody came. Okay, I was coming from outside. I met a neighbor whose house was next to us. They also met a brother who came to see me. So they both stood outside. The fellow just painted her house. And the, day, the first day I saw it, and I said, ah, why did she use this color? It wasn't looking good. I just said it within myself, to myself. So and as I was coming, I said, Pastor. I said, good, good morning, ma. He said, ah, look at my house. I just painted it. I said, ah. See, how did you see the color? Ah, I said it looks awkward. He said, eh, eh. I said, where you use um, cotton brown, you have used white there to come up better. Ah. He said, I don't have money to repaint it, I will leave it like that. I said, it's okay. So I just stepped forward and that brother said, ah, daddy, I call it lava lava. Eh. You, just, you just said it like that. He said, he said, she was expecting you to comment. Ah. I said, I don't know how to do that. That's, it's what I saw. I said, maybe, ah, I said, have I made a mistake? But anyway, there is no regret. <laughs> Praise God. And Sally speaking, she left it like that, and the house is looking good now. <laughs> but the truth is that we need to say the truth to one another, not to discourage. I'm just using that as an example. When somebody is not doing what is right, let him know he's not doing what is right. When somebody is doing what is right, commend him. When somebody dresses somehow, let him know that you are not dressing well as a child of God. Don't say it's awesome. Don't say you are looking good. When she's not actually looking good. Or he's not actually looking good. Praise God. Alright, the next one. Is business or career lies? Business or career lies or professional lies or lies where you work. When you ask for a sick leave, when you are not sick, you are telling a lie. And we say, ah, how much is this? Ah, you can take 10 naira. In fact, I bought exactly 10. Because of you, take 10. I take it 10 naira. I give you for 10 naira. Meanwhile, you bought it for 2 naira. You want to make profit of 8 naira. Or you say, oh, no profit at all. I'm not just, that, that's just the cost price. Just take it at the cost price. As a businessman or a businesswoman, you owe nobody explanation on your pricing. It is 10 million, it is 10 million. If you want to buy it, glory be to God. If you see it elsewhere for 1 million, it's by choice. But I will tell you that my quality may be better than that. Or maybe she got her, he or she got her own at a cheaper rate. 
So this is my own and this is how much I'm selling. If you like, patronize me. If you like, go to the next door neighbor. As Christians, there is nothing like business lies. A lie is a lie. All right, under business lies, we have unjust measure. What the Bible calls unjust measure. And this is applicable to also business men and women who uses measure to sell their things. You use scale or you use tape, tape rule. Praise God. Let's look at Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19, 35 and 36. Deuteronomy 25, 13 to 16. And Proverbs 11, 16. Sorry, Proverbs 16, 11. They're saying the same thing. Leviticus 19, 35. You shall do no injustice in judgment. In measurement of length, weight of volume. Verse 36. You shall have honest scales, honest weights, and honest effort, and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I understand that in some places, when they say 36 inches, that's one year that be, it's actually 33 inches. They have soaked the tape pool in hot water, so the thing has shrunk. Say it's one yard, but it's actually 33 inches. Some who use scale to weigh fish, I learned they will put one small weight. So I, before you buy already, that thing has its own weight. So whatever you buy, they add it to extra 2 kg. If you, you, if you are buying fish worth of 4 kg, you are actually paying 6 kg in place of 4 kg. Praise God. God calls it injustice. Unjust measure. Deuteronomy 25, 13 to 16. Deuteronomy 25, 13 to 16. You shall not have in your bag differing weights, a heavy and a light. Verse 14. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. Verse 15. You shall have a perfect and just width, a perfect and just measure, that your days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. In other words, that you may eat that prosperity for a long time. Use a just measure. Proverbs 11, Proverbs 16, 11. Proverbs 16, 11. Honest ways and scales are the Lord's. All the ways in the bag are his work. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, let's leave uh, business lies alone. The next one is lying by proxy. Lying by proxy. You are not the one telling the lies, but you delegated somebody to tell lies on your behalf. Praise God. For example, tell him I'm not at home. Or tell her I am sleeping. You make that little boy or little girl an emergency secretary. Lying by proxy. There's also the next one, which is gimmicks. Gimmicks. The Universal once said that you can use gimmicks to gather the people. You cannot use gimmicks to sustain them. Praise God. When you say you can do what you cannot do, or what you are not capable of doing, or you say your product is capable of delivering so many things. When you cannot even deliver one. That's gimmicks. And it's a lie. How about getting information by trick? 
to get information by three. That one is common in the church. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Genesis 3, 1. Getting information by trick. That was what the devil did to Eve. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, who is the woman here? Eve, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? He knew what God said. And Eve replied to him. And the woman said to the serpent, that's not what God said. We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. What was his reply? Verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. How did he start? He said that by getting information from did God say, praise God. Praise God. As little as, what did you eat in your house today? Story will start coming out. Getting information by trick. Praise God. How about pretense? When you play along, when you pretend not to know, meanwhile you know the truth. Instead of you saying, no, this is the truth. But you play along. Pretense is a form of lie. Then there is the I don't want to offend anyone syndrome. I don't want to offend anyone syndrome. It's similar to playing along. That when you needed to confront and you did not confront, you say, they get me more out. I'm just on my own. I don't want anybody's trouble. It's a form of lie. Bearing false witness against someone. Exodus 20 verse 16. Exodus 20 verse 16 is one of the commandments that God handed over. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Maybe you were not there when it happened. You said you were there and you saw the fellow carrying out the act. It's a lie. A lie against the fellow, a lie against God. Someone is as harmful when you tell lies against somebody, you are as harmful as hitting the fellow with an axe in the head. How about falsification of documents and details? There are people who carry two days of bath. Two days of bath. Thank you, sir. The last one I'm going to mention briefly before we begin to pray. I think I still have five more minutes. Okay. This one is um, theological lies. When you say God said, when God did not say a word, theological lies. This is peculiar to men and women of God. Why do people tell lies? Why do people tell lies? Number one, it is the Adamic nature of man to tell lies. That's the Adamic nature, unregenerated mind. Easily tell lies. You discover that you don't need to train a little child to tell lies. Maybe the first time, who carried this thing? Say it's not me. Nobody told her. 
Nobody trained him to say that. That is the Adamic nature. And when you carry this nature to adulthood, you become a blatant liar. We used to have a fellow in those days in the fellowship. Just spare yourself by not asking him a question. Just, just, when you just see him, maybe in the last two weeks you have not seen him, just greet him as if you, you saw him this morning. Ah, good morning, bro. How are you doing, sir? Fine. But the morning he said, ah, we've not been seen for the past two weeks. He will tell you how he moved from Honolulu to Hawaii. To <laughs> Meanwhile, he did not leave Lagos. I'm serious. Praise God. So it is the Adamic nature. Until you consciously deal with faith, it will remain. Hear what Apostle Paul said in Colossians 3, 9 and 10. Colossians 3, 9 and 10, the amplified version. He was talking to the church here, talking to believers. What did he say? He said, do not lie to one another. For you have stripped off the old, unregenerate self. By the virtue of giving your life to Christ, it's expected that all things have become new. You have stripped off the old, unregenerated self with its evil practices. Verse 10. And have clothed, because there is no vacuum in nature, you have clothed yourself with the new spiritual self which is ever in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge after the image and the likeness of him who created you. Praise God. So there must be a conscious effort to clothe yourself, your spiritual self, with another garment because you have taken away the old nature. But when you just give your life to Christ and you just flow like that, I am born again, I am born again, is a lie. You have not dealt with that nature. There must be a conscious effort to remove that nature. Praise ye the Lord. I think we should pause here tonight. And take one or two questions or contributions. Questions, contributions. I don't want to pretend about this. It's hot here. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to ask this question. I think the second um, point was half truth. Yes. I want to ask is, is half truth a lie or true? Or is it dependent on circumstance? Half truth is a lie. Okay, why I ask that is in a case where you are given an information, but the information was half by the original giver. And you are supposed to pass that information to somebody. And you're the one that sent it to The way it was passed to you. Yes, you, you passed it the same, but it was half. <clears throat> so who is the liar? Is it the person that transmitted You it? knew that it was a liar. It was half truth. No, you didn't know. You didn't know. Yes. I said something earlier on. Your intention and purpose matters. You are not aware. The way they pass it to you, you pass it to them. You have not told a lie. Okay. Any other questions? Did you hear what he said? All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank God you are a Sunday school teacher, so. Praise the Lord. So I want to get a bit more clarification on I don't want to offend anyone syndrome. So, I mean, similar to the example you gave, there are some people and some circumstances where 
you see the thing and then you don't want to make a comment and maybe why don't you want to make a comment you just don't maybe, because you don't want you don't want wahala exactly so you just want to keep out of it <laughs> and you don't you know so you just want to keep mute is it is it bad i mean is it telling a lie so somebody asks you something and rather than lie about it you just keep mute or you don't want to contribute now because you you're talking about the intention mm -hmm. because you know that maybe this thing is not nice or it's not true and you don't want to say is that a lie i'm going to quote the scriptures to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not what is it I've answered you. <laughs> so, so, yes, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, well, I question or maybe contribution sort of. Mm. Because listening to all that you have listed tonight, definitely I stray what is happening in the church today. Because um, we have, we're in a garden of People, many of us, whereby we don't even believe that some of the things that you have listed are sin in the house of God. And of course, you see them every day from possibly falsification of records to the point of uh, things that people say just because they were needed to project the name of Christ. But yeah. of course, based on the things that are enumerated tonight, even with the word of God, shows that totally we are out of the path of righteousness. Mm. Now, we have such in our midst. We deal with them every day, even up in the church to the place of work. The big question here is that, how do you navigate in that kind of environment, dealing with such people and in such situations? Because they are there. We meet them every day. Yeah. And those are the things that we must confront. You see them. For example, I normally tell people that when you drive vehicles, you have vehicles that are born again. But the people inside... They are not born again. Oh, of course. You see all manner of stickers. Definitely. <laughs> tells you what is in born the Born again cars. So we, mm. there are situations we need to deal with because we have see righteousness exalt a nation. Mm. But how do we confront that? Because even as you step out, you are going to meet... What yeah. spoken about. Thank you so much, sir, for your contribution and your question. I'm just going to say that do your bit. The ones you can correct, that is within your purview, correct it and move on. Don't ignore it. Don't look at it as if nothing has happened. You know, if you, if you bring out your phone, Brocola, go to Google. Type white line. Is that bad? That Google will give you an answer. White lie. Except your own phone may be lying. <laughs> A harmless or trivial lie, especially one told to avoid hurting someone's feelings. A harmless or trivial lie. So if a Christian sees his eye, it's a white lie. It doesn't matter. But it does. It's as bad as that. Google is telling us it's harmless and trivial. But as a child of God, you can make a choice. To know that there is no lie that is trivial in the eyes of God. But that was going to be one of the points, one of the reasons why people tell lies. Because it's been trivialized. After all, Oga also told it. After all, Pastor also told the lie. So it doesn't really matter. So it's that bad that lies have been trivialized. But as Christians, we need to stand out. Just like Apostle Paul was talking to the people uh, of uh, the Colossians. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I remember not too long ago, my younger sister asked me a question, you know, what she was supposed to do. And uh, 
I had to. Uh, Can we please pass around the baskets? Let's okay. correct, so I had collect to, our food. Um, give us a cancel, and then I'm, I just want to paint that same scenario, and look at okay, what was she supposed to do? You know, in their office, she said, okay, they gave them an assignment, and they specified that that assignment was to be done outside their location, another state. And then, because of that, they were given an allowance. Maybe traveling allowance or hotel allowance, you know, maybe what you call outstation allowance. Yeah. And then, eventually, that was done some months prior. And then, while a day or two days to deliver that assignment, they sent another coming. They've already given them the money. So they sent another communication and said that, okay, this assignment is no longer outside of this state, but outside the office within the state. Now, for that kind of activity, um, it shouldn't attract an outstation, you know, allowance. allowance. Yeah. And then she was asking, okay, what should she do? She wasn't the only one involved. There were several people involved, so many of them. And then she said that she has also discovered that that has become the pattern. And that has become the pattern. And then she's like, uh, even when she asked, she said, ah, what concerns you? <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, they gave you assignment. They said you will go and do it somewhere else. Eventually, the same people that gave you assignment were the one that changed the location of the assignment. And then they say you are no longer doing it there. She was asking, okay, that should she return the money, you know, to them? And I was like, I don't think... <laughs> what cancer did you give? Let's okay, so my cancer was that, that um, first, um, you did not give yourself the assignment. An assignment yes. was given to you. With instructions. Yeah, with instructions. And the same set of people that gave that instruction came back and said, okay, they changed the location. And they didn't ask you to return the money. You know, they didn't ask anybody to return the money. So you shouldn't go and say, uh, I'm returning the money. That was what I said to her. Now, the reason why I said, said that to her was because, you know, this is a small person that is just starting a career. And I said to her that, see, if you think that you want to call out these people from, from this place, maybe to that. I said, what about if they decide and say that, okay, you know what? That amount is actually for your transportation. What would you, what would you actually call that to be? So that was the counsel I gave to her, that you don't need to go call out the entire authority and say that... Uh, I'm returning this money back because uh, I did not travel to, to uh, maybe Castina to deliver the assignment. She has uh, an answer for you. <clears throat> so why, why are you asking? Because this thing did not happen just yesterday. Yes. Now, the reason why I'm asking is because mm. there are certain positions that we find ourselves, you know, sometimes. That we know that the intention and the practice, you know, in that place, it's not, uh, it's not accurate. Let me use that word. And then the question is, how do you call out those kind of, those kind of things? I said to her that, see, when you, when, when you rise up from this place where you are and you get to that position, you know, these are the things that maybe you have the opportunity to correct within the system. Okay, you don't, you don't even think that when she's about rising to that position, it could be used against her. Now, the reason why I say, the reason why I... It's said, okay. The reason why I say it, could, it won't be used against her is because of the fact that she didn't allot it to herself. And but she I, took it. She signed be, for it. She collected it. She used it. 
they do it, the way they do it is this. Now, they don't maybe pay to you, uh, maybe to your account or whatever. They just come to the office and say, this is your allowance, and then they give everybody, they give everybody their, their money, you know, for the assignment. All right, let's hear from how you are justifying it already. So, <laughs> Bring the mic here. There. Praise the Lord. So as long as it is a specific um, assignment, there, this thing you've talked about now is out-of-station allowance. Out-of-station allowance is paid if you are going out of station. If you don't go out of the station, you have no right to collect that money. And if they gave it to you and they changed the assignment, even if that is the practice, you need to return the money. And I say this because it is a test. So you say mm. people have been doing it. It's okay. People have been doing it. But you see, it is a test. And at some point in time, it will catch up with people. And I say this, I'm very used to this thing. I came into an organization where it is the norm, this sort of thing. People collect out of station. They don't retire it. They don't use it for... But you see, people have been called out at some point in time for something that had been a norm for several years. At a point in time when people were being promoted, people were being recognized some of these people were called out and those things were held against them so i think that if some no matter what even if it is one individual no matter how the person seems bad or seems like the fico mm. in that organization you return the money as long as you didn't put it to use for what it was specified for it is out of station and it should and must be used for out of station thank you so much ma well uh, the bible says that um let your light so shine so much that everyone around you will know she should stand out as a child of God not minding the direction others are going the fact that others are going that direction does not make it right I don't know how far this story is true uh, Mrs. A Professor Akoyili of blessed memory she was called by the then president, Obasanjo, to become a minister because of her record somewhere. Any money given to her, she will retire it. The one that is in excess, she will return to the coffers. And the report got to president, the president before he became a president. So when he was looking for people to fill up his cabinet, he said, they should go and look for the lady. So the truth is that even unbelievers are looking for wives that are righteous. When the woman says, I'm in the market, they know that she's the market. You know, it's, uh, Yoruba says, I'm Benny Lori. <laughs> so tomorrow, the CEO of that company will need somebody he can trust. If she decides today to stand out amongst others, one day, she will get the reward. Praise God. So go and change your counsel, and may God forgive you. <laughs> We need to praise her. Two people, okay. 30 seconds each, please. Hallelujah. What I wanted to say clarification about is when we talk about being diplomatic, mm. diplomacy, and um, I mean, we talk about political correctness all the time as well. And then, um, I also thought about it that in church, you see men of God say there is one person here that is going to be blessed. And um, <laughs> I mean, what, what do you have to say to all that? There's one person here who will be blessed. It's your choice. It is what God said. No, it is. I, I know somebody who is, um, is a man of God that is high up there. I won't mention his name. He has told us before that that we should watch whenever he's praying, whenever he's saying something. That we would say there is somebody here. You won't say that somebody's, I mean, that God said. See, there is one person here that is going to receive his healing today. Sorry? They are. But it's just like the Bible says that the poor will not cease in the land. God did not say a particular person. So it's by choice. If you want to be healed, then you, you key into it. And your faith is your faith that is working now. Not even what he said. Your faith. 
So the man did not say God said. If he did not say God said, then you can't use it against him. 